Hello everybody and welcome to this week's safety recap. Before we get started make sure you give me a thumbs up down below there to encourage me to make more videos of this nature. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll find additional videos like this along with toolbox safety topic videos and leadership training videos. I had the opportunity this past week to visit 11 job sites and I'm proud to report that in general, everything looked good. There were some items of note. EH&S handbooks. The Environmental Health and Safety Handbook, we would need to make sure we have an updated copy of the EH&S handbook on our job. The corporate EH&S is a wealth of information concerning OSHA and company policy and standards. The EHS can be helpful for training, informing, and for reference at all employee levels. Next, we need to talk about silica exposure, specifically silica exposure control plans. When there is the possibility of respirable silica dust exposure, an ECP must be developed and adhered to. Guidelines for completing the ECP can be found in the Corporate EH&S Handbook and in the OSHA 1926. If need be, contact your safety representative for additional guidance and resources. Next, we need to talk about the PTP. It seems to be a reoccurring theme. The PTP is the most important tool on the job site. A pre-task review is to be performed determining tools and materials, means and methods of performing the task, sequencing of the task events, hazards associated with the task, and the means to mitigate recognized hazards. Once the review is completed, a PTP is to be developed involving all participating team members' thoughts and suggestions. The PTP must be completed and signed by all team members involved with the task prior to the commencement of work activities. The PTP allows for employees to feel more engaged in their corporate safety culture, promotes teamwork, promotes higher safety standards, and increases productivity. Safety and the PTP should be priority number one. Next we have to talk about protecting the work area. Not only are we to protect the safety of our workers, but we have the responsibility and duty to protect other workers or contractors. We are responsible for our work area and anyone who may be in the work area. Protect your work areas from unauthorized entry of personnel. Establish warning lines with danger tape to prevent others from entering our work area. These other people may not be aware of the hazards and if we don't have our site protected, they could wander in and be injured and our team members may not be aware of people in the area if we're performing uh, demolition work or if an object could be dropped. If there's no protection of the work area, the likelihood of someone getting struck by a dropped object is higher. Make sure that we protect our work area with proper barricade or warning lines. Protect your work area, protect your co-workers, and protect the workers of other contractors. Establish and maintain barriers around your work area. Our responsibilities in the leadership role are to lead, guide, and direct our team members to a safe, successful completion of each project. Our responsibilities include planning, training, counseling, consoling, supporting, promoting, 
and most of all, ensuring the safety of our co-workers. Success is a continuing effort. The path to success is full of challenges and we have to rise to meet, to meet them. We must go further every day and we must go further in every way to be successful. Guys, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, make sure to give me a thumbs up to encourage me to make more videos like this. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find toolbox topic videos and leadership training videos. Once again, thanks for watching and until we see each other again, take care of yourself because you're number one. Look out for your co-workers and I will see you in the field.